him as a saint going to a party that ain't nothing but sin, drinking, maybe fornicate, but maybe he'd have to lay some hands on somebody. Maybe he'd have to save some souls. I know he got a contract with Revolt, so I'm just like, it, it, it's just real strange. Diddy is bringing the entire ship down with him as shocking new disclosures reveal the scope of Pastor T.D. Jake's involvement in his sex trafficking ring. Seriously, Pastor, what were you thinking? Pastor Thomas Dexter, T.D. Jakes, noted for running Dallas Potter's house megachurch, is embroiled in a litigation involving C.P. Diddy Combs. The case, filed by Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a music producer for Combs Bad Boy Records, accuses Combs and his team of being complicit in sex trafficking. This legal complaint was brought in the United States. Combs allegedly harassed, drugged, and intimidated Jones for more than a year, according to a federal court in the Southern District of New York and reported by USA Today. Jones is going high, seeking $30 million in damages and a traditional jury trial. Now here's where things get interesting. Jones thinks he has strong proof, claiming he has indisputable evidence of Combs discussing how he planned to exploit his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to lessen the damage of another lawsuit involving Cassie Ventura. But hold on. Before you jump to conclusions, let's clarify one thing. Jakes is not named as a defendant in this complaint, thus he is not in legal trouble. However, in December 2023, there were rumors on social media that Jakes may have been participating in some crazy sex parties held by Combs. Jakes addressed these allegations during a Christmas Eve service at the Potter's house, keeping things real by saying, the worst that could happen is that everything is true and all I have to do is repent from my heart. He appeared to be rather confident, claiming that the blood has enough power to cover all types of sin. I don't care what it is, blood will fix anything. And to be sure, he emphasized, but I don't have to repent for this. Let's not forget that Jake is the mastermind behind the Potter's House, which he established in 1996. This mega church has over 30,000 dedicated members with branches across Dallas, Frisco, Fort Worth, Denver, and Los Angeles. In 2021, Jakes began a sermon series on Combs Cable Television Network, Revolt Media. Fast forward to last month, and Combs made a significant move by selling his stake in Revolt Media to an unknown bidder. This comes after he created the network in 2013. And if that wasn't enough, Combs announced his resignation as chairman of Revolt Media last year. Diddy is one of hip hop's most famous and controversial individuals. Seen Combs has played an important part in the business for decades, from his ascent to fame as Puff Daddy to his rebirth as Brother Love. Allegations of sex trafficking and raids on his homes have shocked many, leaving them wondering what transpired behind closed doors. Jean Deal, Diddy's close friend and former bodyguard, recently spoke out, shedding light on the situation. He started by addressing the misconception that his goal was to bring down another black man. According to Gene Deal, it is not about bringing down a brother, but rather holding people accountable for their actions. He was frustrated by Diddy's public persona of love and compassion, claiming it did not reflect reality. Before we dig in, we need to clean the air. Some people believe I'm here to bring down a brother, but that ain't it. A black man did not commit all of those heinous crimes. Puffy did. I became tired of hearing him talk about love when it wasn't genuine. Nah, man, I call it like I see it. The talk then shifted to the unexpected raids on Diddy's residences. Jondi expressed disbelief that Diddy's mansions could be raided for sex trafficking. He ascribed this to Diddy's evolution over the years from flamboyant Puff Daddy to more charitable brother love. The discovery of monitoring equipment in Diddy's mansions, purportedly by Lil Rob, only fueled the flames. Now, onto the raid situation. Could I ever imagine Diddy's cribs getting raided for sex trafficking? Hell no. Back then, he was puffy, not brother love. His whole vibe changed over the years, you know. Inviting dudes to parties, shopping sprees, that ain't the puffy we knew. One of the most surprising aspects of this story 
is Diddy's quiet among his high-profile acquaintances. Gene Deal hypothesized that they may be hesitant to speak out for fear of damaging their own reputations. Drawing comparisons to Vince McMahon's experience with the WWE, he speculated that Diddy may become the scapegoat for a wider controversy. And about his famous pals staying silent, they either know the truth or scared to mess up their brand. Look at what happened to Vince McMahon. They're painting Puff as the face of this mess, just like they did with Vince and the WWF. Perhaps the most unsettling aspect of Gene Deal's revelations is the presence of tapes purportedly recorded in Diddy's mansions. Lil Rod's claims that every room was bugged caused shockwaves throughout the business. Jonda suggested that the recordings could include incriminating evidence against celebrities, politicians, and religious figures. As for tapes, if Lil Rod ain't lying and those rooms were bugged, oh yeah, they got him. Celebs, politicians, even preachers were in those parties. It's wild, man. But if those tapes exist, it's only a matter of time before they surface. Shook, you bet they'd are, me personally. If Lil Rod's telling the truth, tapes are out there, no doubt. As the inquiry into Diddy's behavior continues, the hip-hop community remains on edge. Gene Deal's views provide a window into a crisis that threatens to rock the industry to its core. I mean, the man's had like five lawsuits filed against him, and all of them allege crazy things. Rodney Lil Rod Jones Jr., a recurred producer hailing from Chicago, has made waves by filing a hefty 105-page federal complaint against none other than Combs, accusing him and his cohorts of being involved in an illegal racketeering enterprise. In his complaint, Jones boldly asserts, I have irrefutable evidence of A, the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms, B, the displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms, and C, the solicitation of minors and sex workers. According to Jones, as detailed in his complaint, his involvement with comms began innocently enough in 2022, when comms sought his expertise to produce songs. However, Jones alleges that the tasks assigned to him by comms transcended the realm of music production. He claims that he was coerced into procuring drugs and arranging for sex workers to satisfy the desires of Mr. Combs. Moreover, Jones contends that Combs had a stash of specially designated alcohol for women, which he allegedly spiked with ecstasy. Jones also levels accusations of sexual harassment and assault against Combs, recounting instances where he was grabbed without consent and forced to work in the presence of a naked Combs and actor Cuba Gooding Jr. aboard a yacht. He alleges that Gooding engaged in inappropriate touching and groping, only ceasing when Jones forcefully pushed him away. It was filed on February 2, 2024 in Manhattan's federal court, and as of the time of recording, is still unfolding. Jones's lawyer has accused Combs of some alarming behavior, claiming he's been manufacturing stories about plaintiff on TMZ and dispatching his agents to harass plaintiff's eight-year-old daughter, the mother of his child, and ex-spouses, all of whom have expressed fear of potential harm by defendant Combs. Jones' attorney brought this to the attention of Judge J. Paul Aitken, who's overseeing the case, mentioning that an additional police report was filed on March 3rd. Jones is pushing for a jury trial. What was Combs' response? When asked for comment, Combs' attorney, Seen Holly, reiterated a statement provided to the New York Times on February 26, 2024. It went like this, Mr. Jones is nothing more than a con man shamelessly looking for an easy and wholly undeserved payday. We have indisputable, incontrovertible proof that his claims are complete fabrications. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones' attorney Tyron Blackburn have been ignored as Mr. Blackburn has refused to return our calls. We look forward to addressing these ridiculous claims in court and intend to take all appropriate action against all who are attempting to peddle them. Jane Doe, on the other hand, claims she was gang raped and sex trafficked by Combs and Harp Pierre, the former president of Bad Boys Records, when she was 17 years old and in 11th grade. 
She claims she met Pierre in a lounge in Detroit, and he told her he was best friends with Combs. Combs allegedly persuaded Doe to follow Pierre and a third assailant on a private jet to his studio in New York City. She alleges she consented and boarded a flight bound for Tedderboro, New Jersey before being escorted to Combs' studio. She claims that once there, Combs and his colleagues, including Pierre, plied her with drugs and drink, and that she was then gang-raped at the studio by Combs, Pierre, and a third attacker. According to her complaint, while Mr. Combs was raping Miss Doe, he complained that he could not get off unless she pinched his nipples as hard as she could. Combs then allegedly watched while the third assailant raped her as she implored him to stop. After third assailant was finished, Mr. Pierre took his turn at raping Miss Doe and then violently forced her to give him oral sex, during which Miss Doe was choking and struggling to breathe. According to the criminal complaint, Combs and Pierre have rejected the claims made against them in this case. Combs attorneys have requested the judge to dismiss the entire case, claiming Combs was a victim of the cancel culture hysteria in the courts. The victim has been attempting to maintain anonymity. Judge Jessica G.L. Clark, who is supervising the case, has dismissed the woman's desire to remain anonymous, but has postponed that decision until she rules on Combs' move to dismiss. The judge gave the on December 6, 2023, Combs issued a statement addressing the complaint. Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy, he said. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Pierre also released a statement vehemently denying the accusations. This is a work of fiction, he explained. I've never engaged in, witnessed, or heard about anything like this before. These vile charges are baseless and a desperate attempt at financial advantage. I will fiercely safeguard and defend my reputation and name. People who know me understand that these assertions are false. Cassie's lawsuit alleges that Diddy committed numerous acts of abuse, including rape, violence, and forced intercourse with male sex workers. Cassie described the billionaire, head of her previous label, and then personal boyfriend, as a textbook abuser who enticed her into what she thought was a fatally protective relationship, only to find herself in an unequal and violent sexual partnership. Diddy allegedly scared her by blowing up a man's car, dangling a friend from a 17th-floor balcony, and ordering her to keep his handgun in her purse. She never went to the police because she was concerned it would only give Mr. Combs another reason to harm her. Diddy disputed the claims. According to the complaint, Mr. Combs held Cassie, Miss Cassandra Ventura, down for over a decade and subjected her to his violent behavior and unreasonable demands. Miss Ventura's darkest periods were those spent captive by Mr. Combs in a cycle of abuse, assault, and sex trafficking. According to the lawsuit, Diddy expressed romantic interest in Cassie in 2006 after his makeup artist mentioned it. Soon after, the young celebrity is said to have slipped into a jet-setting, drug-fueled lifestyle. When they first started dating, Diddy and his inner circle allegedly had complete control over her life. According to the lawsuit, individuals close to Bad Boy Records founder concealed physical abuse. The lawsuit claims that Mr. Combs staff and employees observed beatings, but no one dared to speak up against their terrifying and aggressive boss. Cassie stated she never went to the police because she was afraid it would give Diddy an excuse to harm her. In one instance of assault in 2009, he allegedly kicked her repeatedly in the face, forcing her to bleed before instructing his crew to hide her in a hotel room. Every time she hid, Mr. Combs' huge network of organizations and connected entities discovered her, and people who worked for Mr. Combs' companies pleaded with her to return to him, the complaint stated. Many went so far as to say that her refusal to return to Mr. Combs will jeopardize her success in the entertainment world. Cassie had memory loss, suicidal ideation, and excessive substance abuse during her relationship with Diddy, according to the lawsuit. 
the lawsuit docs describe a situation in which MRI data was given directly to Diddy. The action named Diddy, whose real name is Sean Combs, and his linked corporate entities, Bad Boy Entertainment, Bad Boy Records, Epic Records, Combs Enterprises, and Docor, alleging widespread involvement in the allegations. Cassie sought unspecified compensatory damages. Cassie also claimed Diddy forced her to participate in freak-offs, which required her to coordinate and execute sex acts with male sex workers while he masturbated. The meetings continued for years at high-end hotels around the country, with some happening as frequently as once a week, according to the lawsuit. Diddy documented the sessions with photographs and video. Cassie attempted to erase films from her phone but was unable. She was once compelled to see footage from a flight that she thought she deleted. Following an FO in 2016, he'd allegedly paid a hotel $50,000 to erase hallway CCTV footage of an alcoholic Diddy flinging glass vases at Cassie as she attempted to flee after receiving a black eye. During these traumatic experiences, she would use large amounts of drugs to dissociate, including ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol. Cassie claimed that excessive substance use led to addiction. According to the complaint, Diddy blew up Kid Cutie's car in 2012 as retribution for the rapper's brief romance with Cassie. Diddy once said he targeted him. The lawsuit claims that Kid Cutie's automobile exploded in his driveway about that time. Cutie confirmed Cassie's account in a statement made by his publicist. This is all real, he told the New York Times. According to the petition, Diddy forced his way into her home and assaulted her in 2018, despite her repeated refusal and attempts to push him away. Cassie ended her relationship with him following the incident. She ended her romance with Bad Boy in 2019. Cassie and Combs voluntarily agreed to resolve their case on November 17, 2023. Cassie asked the court to dismiss her entire case with prejudice, which meant her allegations could not be resubmitted four days after filing her lawsuit. Lisa Gardner filed a 22-page lawsuit against Combs and Aaron Hall, saying that they forced her to have sex with them when she was 16. Garner claims she met Combs and Hall in New York at a Jadeshi album release party. Following the event's dinner, Combs allegedly invited Gardner and a friend to Hall's house for an after-party. She claimed Combs pushed her into having sex with him, and as she was getting dressed, Hall barged into the room, pinned her down, and allegedly forced her to have intercourse with him. Gardner claims she had severe vaginal pain as a result of the encounter. She stated she fled the apartment and later realized that her friend had slept with both Combs and Hall. Gardner stated that the day after the event, Combs came to her home and assaulted and choked her until she passed out. Gardner's case claims that after being violently and statutorily raped by Combs and Aaron Hall, her life has been consumed by despair, post-traumatic stress disorder, and damaged relationships with males. She has demanded a jury trial. Following the lawsuit's filing, Combs' representative issued a statement calling the charges contrived and false, and the litigation a money grab. Dickerson claims in her 22-page complaint that she met Combs after performing in a music video with him while at Syracuse University. She went to supper with him on January 3, 1991, during her school holiday. Dickerson said that Combs purposely drugged her during their encounter. According to her lawsuit, she accused Combs of sexually assaulting her and videotaping the incident. Days later, a male acquaintance allegedly told her that he, along with other males, had watched the sex tape. She asked a friend who had seen the footage, and they supposedly said everyone. Dickerson claims that after that, her life spiraled out of control. And when she returned to college, she was admitted to the hospital due to acute suicidal ideation. Dickerson claims to have experienced a lifetime of damage as a result of drugging, sexual assault, and mistreatment, as well as being the victim of revenge pornography perpetrated by Sean Combs or P. Diddy created and marketed. She is suing him for assault and battery, deliberate infliction of mental anguish, human trafficking, and revenge pornography. According to a spokesman, 
comms refuted and dismissed the allegations of misbehavior. The representative stated that he recognizes this as a money grab. Mr. Combs' popularity and success make him an accessible target for accusers willing to distort the truth without conscience or punishment for financial gain. The New York Assembly undoubtedly did not intend or anticipate that the Adult Survivors Act would be used for nefarious purposes. The people should remain skeptical and not rush to believe these baseless claims. Christian King Combs, Seen Combs' 26-year-old son, is being sued for alleged sexual assault, battery, and intentional infliction of mental distress, among other claims. Grace Omar K. filed a 31-page lawsuit claiming that she was sexually assaulted while working as a yacht deck crew for the family during Christmas break in the Caribbean in 2022. She also wants Seen Diddy Combs to be held accountable for his son's actions in chartering the yacht and bearing responsibility for his guests during the Caribbean trip. According to Omar K., there was a regular turnover of suspected sex workers and other A-list celebrities aboard the yacht, including French Montana and actor Cuba Gooding Jr. claims that sex workers were stretched out asleep aboard the yacht, and it was difficult to tell which bottles of alcohol were tainted with narcotics and which weren't. Her lawsuit claims that on the early morning of December 28, 2022, a heavily intoxicated Christian Combs raped her. She claims that Christian prevented her from leaving, stripped him naked, and attempted to coerce her into performing oral copulation with him. Omar K is suing Diddy, accusing him of creating a debaucherous workplace characterized by suspected sex workers, violence, allegedly drug-laced drinks, and disrespect for crew members. Aaron Dyer, an attorney for the father-son pair, described the lawsuit's allegations as vulgar and meritless. This complaint contains the same type of manufactured lies and irrelevant facts that we've come to expect from Blackburn, he added, referring to the attorney who also represents Rodney Jones. This is precisely why a federal judge in New York slapped him two days ago for a pattern of improperly filing cases in federal court to garner media attention, embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure defendants to settle quickly, and why he was submitted to the Disciplinary Commission of the Southern District of New York. We will file a move to dismiss this absurd claim. On December 7, singer-songwriter Tiffany Redd published an open letter to Diddy in Rolling Stone, corroborating Cassie's claims. Red alleges she became close to the R&B singer in 2015 while working on a record Diddy never released. The singer also went to Cassie's 29th birthday party, where Diddy allegedly shouted and cursed at her. After his verbal abuse disrupted karaoke with friends, Red claimed she saw the rapper drag a drug Cassie into a freakout in the middle of the night. She also said Cassie mentioned the physical assault to her on another occasion. Diddy's treatment of herself and her companion led to PTSD, paranoia, and anxiety. The power disparity makes fighting back nearly impossible, and speaking up is terrifying. Red wrote in her letter, but here I am standing next to my pal. There are times in our lives when we must make the difficult decision of whether or not to speak truth to power. It's one of those moments. 50 Cent immediately began working on a documentary on Diddy's sexual assault allegations. The rapper announced the news in a tweet on December 7th. G-Unit Film and Television's earnings from this documentary will benefit victims of sexual assault and rape, 50 wrote with an excerpt from the project. In the video, former Bad Boy Records rapper Mark Curry discusses Diddy's opulent parties and allegations that he spiked champagne for women to drink. He believes they would become extremely slippery if they were not aware they had been poisoned. G-Unit Film and Television will produce the film. The searches of two houses owned by hip-hop mogul Seen Diddy Combs were designed to find evidence to back up his accuser's claims. And a legal expert said the raids signal that federal prosecutors in New York, who are leading the pro, are confident in the case they're building.